Hello and welcome to Green Fingers and we're back in our sustainability classroom where we're learning the principles of sustainable gardening and also being water wise. Flat out at the moment. The kids and Steve are in the urban orchard. We're planting all of that in. The chooks need to go in as well. Steve and the kids also need to get busy with regards to the aquaponics area. Even the siren's going off, so we're really under the pump for time. Darren and Renee and myself need to plant in all of the seedlings. The siren is not gonna stop us. We're too busy. Good to have you with us. So put on your gloves and let's enjoy the journey today on Green Fingers. My mate Joe from Taswan Trees has just arrived with a fantastic selection of plants for the urban orchard. Joe, I'm loving what I'm seeing. Guava tree? Beautiful tree. Is this an uh, Indian or Hawaiian? It's a Hawaiian, and I brought you a sample. Ah. Check out the lovely colours in that. The pink flesh, that's the giveaway. Oh, Smells delicious. Yeah. And I see white mulberry tree. White mulberry, it's really good, um, and it's parent friendly. Yep, no stains. And the kindy kids have silkworms, so they'll be after the leaves. Now Beautiful. this one I'm excited about, raspberries. Yes, very nice. They'll grow well up here in the cool conditions. Yeah, the ideal in Rolling Stones, you've seen the price of the fruit in the shops. Oh, you'd be mad if you don't plant your own. Absolutely, well I think it's time to get planting. Thanks Joe. Thank you. Jason and Ben have been hard at work improving the soil for our urban orchard. They've added BioWise compost and soil solver, which will ensure our trees get off to a good, healthy start. We're ready to plant and the kids are about to become experts on what it takes to grow strong, healthy trees. The orchard is going to provide tremendous learning opportunities for both the teachers and the students on all aspects of fruit production, including how to prepare and preserve their harvest. We're planting 32 trees in our orchard and in less than five years, each tree will be producing around 50 kilos of fruit. That's around 1,600 kilos of fresh produce a year for the school community to share. The veggie beds are all set up and now it's time for our favourite part, the planting. There's a wide selection of veggies here, there's something for everyone and they're all varieties that are suitable for autumn planting, such as cabbages, cauliflowers, broccolis and heirloom bee trees. And to make sure they're the very best quality, we've sourced them from our favourite local supplier, Banara Nurseries. Now kids, if you're having trouble getting them out, squeeze the bottom, little twist and out they pop. Having a productive vegetable garden that works for you is the key. So like the kids are doing, plant a range of veggies that crop over a long period so you don't get stuck with a feast or a famine. With the vegetables we've selected, we'll have crops ready in a couple of short weeks and others that will mature over the next few months. To get the best results in your veggie patch, choose a sunny location, use only fresh, healthy seedlings and remember to practice crop rotation. For everything you need to know about creating a water-wise veggie garden, visit the Water Corporation website. Here you'll find loads of info about improving your soil, locating your garden bed, and of course, the ins and outs of watering. It's all too easy, isn't it, boys? Yep. yep. Nikita, how does water keep us healthy? Well, you use it to wash your hands, your body, and to rehydrate yourself. Good. And Cerise, what's cool about this water-wise school? Um, I get to help my school um, save water and I get to go on TV. <laughs> Love the answer. And Allura, why should we conserve water? We need to conserve water for our generation and the future generation. Quite true. Thank you, ladies. After the break, we head to the fish tanks and a bit more work in the urban orchard. Our friends at WA Aquaponics have helped us out setting up the grow beds and the tanks. Now it's time to have some real fun with the fish. Tony Bart from Challenge Institute of Technology has joined us. Tony, what are the best varieties for us to be growing at home? Well, Steve, I believe that uh, silver perch are the ideal species because this is a species that will cope with our warm summers and our cool winters. Alternatively, you can use koi. Now, koi are not normally eaten, but for many people doing aquaponics, they don't want to eat the fish. The fish become like a pet. But, of course, the koi still produce the waste needed by the plants. We've got Thea here who's just testing the water temperature. What's the water temperature there, Thea? 
I'm pretty sure it's 18. Okay, and in the bag? It looks like 17. 17. Okay, so we're about a degree difference, and we would need to wait probably another 10 to 15 minutes because fish really don't like to be shocked. What we're going to do now is just add some water into the bag. So you want to scoop some water in there? And what we're doing is we're adjusting the water pH as well. Tony, what sort of numbers could we safely have in, a, say, a 500-litre tank? Well, in a 500-litre tank, if you talked about 10 to 15 fish, now, they'll get to harbour size, plate size, um, that's about 500 grams. Now, this is a small tank, bear that in mind, so we're not talking about a large number, but that's ideal for the average family. And a tremendous amount of fun as well. Oh, absolutely. With the fish in, uh, we always add the fish first because they supply the nutrients that the plants will need. So we add the fish first, they produce the waste, and then the plants can utilise that nutrient to grow well. So putting in the plants is going to be our next job. Can we help? You sure can. With a little technique called a spallowing, you can train your fruit trees to grow flat on a fence or on a wall. For this sustainability classroom, we're espalling an apple tree on this fence. Not only is it a great space saver, but it's also an awesome visual statement. Let's go see Steve in action. So Steve, I heard this isn't rocket science. Renee, this is a really easy way to a garden and it's a fantastic way to add the wow factor to any garden and especially our sustainability classroom. So I'm going to show you a few techniques first. First we're going to go through and we're going to take off any of those unwanted branches that are sort of facing the wrong way. Then we choose the branches that we want to espalier. We lay them horizontally against the lattice and lattice is a great framework to use. And we just twist it like this. Twist it like that. Pray. And there it is, ready to go. So while Renee finishes espaling the apple against the fence, the kids are here planting out raspberries and blueberries, adding more fruit to our sustainability classroom. So Steve, what other fruit trees are great for putting against the fence in WA? Oh, Renee, you can grow just about any type of fruit using the espalier method. Apricots, peaches, citrus, they'll all grow so easily using this method. So there you have it. With a little pruning and training, you can create a stunning garden feature at home. Kids, how long do you reckon it will take for blueberries to come out? About two months. Sweet. Do you want tips on the best veggies, herbs, spices and fruit for your garden? Do you want to know more about heritage chicken varieties, aquaponics or rainwater harvesting? Check out our project sheets. They'll show you, step by step, the process of building all the elements of our sustainability classroom. The best chicken, fruit and fruit trees for a sustainable garden. Our project sheets are packed full of great water-wise gardening advice. For more information, visit watercorporation.com.au. Tiana, how do you save water at home? I have timers in the shower and I also have a drip system in the garden. That'll help. And Vinny, do you know anyone that wastes water? Yeah, my brother, and he doesn't turn the tap off properly. What do you say to him? Turn the tap off properly, you doofus. That'd help. After the break, we're going to check on our sustainability classroom and also look at some herbs. OK, so where are we at? The gravel mulch has to go down. Theo's got to test drive the outdoor kitchen. Renee, how's the chook pen going? Yet again, Hamish has done an amazing job. We're now ready for the chickens to come home to roost. Steve-o, how's the aquaponics coming? It's looking great, Todd. The fish are in. Jason's finishing off the frames. And the kids are here washing the soil off the plants, ready for them to go into the expanded clay. Excellent job, kids! Oh, yeah! So, Darren, how's these veggie beds coming on, mate? Toddy, we are going great guns. The veggie beds are all planted up, and Jazzy and the crew are helping you set out the herbs. Good, mate. You better get to it. He could always come and help us. <laughs> herbs would have to be the simplest and easiest of all edible plants to grow, and we've chosen five absolutely essential varieties for an autumn garden including sage, oregano, thyme, mint and rosemary. Herbs are really easy to look after. Most only require a light prune or harvesting to keep them in great nick. And the Herbs Rust variety contain all the information you need for each specific variety on the back of the label. For more information, download the project sheets from the Water Corporation website. 
Remember to group your herbs together to suit their watering requirements. Most herbs can be used fresh or dried and many have medicinal properties. Since herbs require such little care and are yet so rewarding, they are an essential part of any edible garden. These aquaponic grow trays are the ideal way to be growing your own range of edible plants. Arrowroot, Cancun, water parsley, Asian mint, and my favourite, English cress. At the same time, the plants are filtering the water, making it nice and clean, ready to go back for the fish. If you're looking to establish your own sustainable garden and want a bit more information, keep a look out for this, the West Australian Garden Guide. It's got heaps of tips on how to set up the veggie patch and the urban orchard, and it's specific to our West Australian climate and also soil conditions. The West Australian Garden Guide, available in all good bookshops, and also you can check out our webpage as well. Just topping up the worm farm, and Benjamin, how does a worm farm contribute to being water-wise? There's uh, liquid fertiliser and mulch, which helps our gardens grow. Very good. Abena, why do we need a desal plant? Um, because we're running out of water in WA and we there's more people coming into WA. Quite true. Callum, how does it work though? How does a desal plant work? We go to the beach, we get the seawater out, we take all the salt out, we put it in our drinking taps and then we drink it. Quite true. And Thomas, when's the best time to water our gardens? Evening or early morning. Oh, well done. Before 9 o'clock in the morning and after 6 o'clock. After the break, while we're still topping up the worm farm, we're going to do some mulching and some pizzas, but not the same. When you've put as much effort into creating a landscape as we have here, it's absolutely imperative you close a deal with a 100 mil layer of a top quality mulch. We're using Garden Art Drought Breaker from BioWise. It's a five star water saver. These large uneven particle sizes ensure the water moves rapidly through the mulch into the soil, meaning any rain or irrigation is totally efficient. Garden Art Drought Breaker is made from recycled organics, diverting waste from landfill. It's fully composted so there's no nitrogen drawdown. In fact, this mulch delivers nutrients to the plants and the composting removes the volatile oils so it's a low fire risk too. When we told the kids they had to help move the mulch, they weren't too happy. But Drought Breaker is so easy to use that it didn't take them long to get into the swing of it and actually they were having a bit of fun too. A correctly applied quality mulch will insulate and cool the soil, cutting evaporation and protecting the essential soil microbes. Drought Breaker meets the Australian standards to make sure it's weed and pathogen free. Unlike non-composted tree prunings, which can introduce fungal diseases and weed seeds into your valuable garden. Therefore, it's safe to use in all types of landscapes, including schools and around edible plants. Large particles make this a long life mulch, but remember, it still needs to be reapplied annually. And it's important to never apply mulch to dry soil. Always use a quality wetting agent first. Go to the BioWise website for a listing of the selected soil yards that stock this exciting new product. And then jump over to our website and follow the prompts. You could be one of three lucky winners of the brand new Garden Art Drought Breaker Mulch from BioWise. So whether your project is as grand as our sustainability classroom or just a modest patch in your backyard, remember, there's never a question of too mulch or not too mulch. It's always essential. Yeah, 
How good is this oven? It's going to be a major part of the sustainability classroom. Once they've got all the fresh stuff growing here, they'll be able to make whatever they want and cook it in this oven. I've got my helpers here going. We're going to be making pizzas. And just put your hand on it and do it like that. That's it. Well done. Don't rub your eyes. Ferguson's have given us this oven. They're a WA company. They've been going for 40 years. It's part of their alfresco range. If there's something they know about, it's ovens. This ain't just an oven, it's a lifestyle. One of my favorite features is the button. You press it and it starts. 20 minutes, it's hot. Inside, flame failure. If the gas goes out, I'm not gonna blow up. Doesn't get any better than that. Everybody's been working so hard, it's lunchtime. I'm gonna cook them something, I'm gonna make them pizza. And each pizza's gonna have a part of the garden on it. But before that, let's check out what's on. Seven years! Well done. Don't forget to watch Seven News straight after Green Fingers. Well done, guys. It's pizza time, have a piece of pizza. We've got a pea and bacon pizza here with fresh thyme. We've got a four cheeses pizza here with oregano. And we've even got a strawberry pizza with strawberries. They're all going to be coming out of the garden. Let's have a cut. Oh, do you hear the crust on that? How's your pizza, guys? Good? This time I've cooked pizza, but next time I could be cooking a roast, I could be cooking uh, chicken, I could be doing veggies, even scones. So you're going to have to stay pizza. tuned for that. Come on, let's get some pizza. Come on, let's get some What's pizza. that noise? Come on. Is that someone who shouldn't be Come here? On. Hello, you guys. We need some pizza. I've got Hello, one Thea. for you. Yeah, excellent. Come on, guys.